while browsing on eBay for dubious electrical products, including this other energy saver. I've, I've done a review on a, another bigger energy saver, but I thought, well, let's take a look at this one because it's quite stylish, but that's for another video. This video is about solar lights because these came from the same seller. And the seller involved was an uh, easy one this time, Say Hello 2015, which uh, I'm pretty sure I've used them before. They are quite a big seller. And it, I wouldn't say it's an incredibly cheap set, £7.31. But having said that, what caught my attention was the solar panel they showed was quite generous. And I have to say I'm quite glad that they have actually sent out the same size they, they show. It's not unusual for them to show huge solar panels and then you get it and it's just little slivers of silicon inside. But in this case, it, it's full. And the LEDs... Instead of being the usual type that have the sort of heat shrink around them and they're just sort of side-emitting 5mm LEDs, these ones are the really very waterproof. And I've tested uh, this style of LED for over a year now and it's proving to be great outdoors. It, it just handles the weather fine because there's nowhere for water to really wick in. The LEDs are kind of... So they're, they're soldered onto uh, insulated copper wire um, and the little surface mount LEDs, and then they're dipped in resin, so they're completely sealed against water ingress. And quite neat is that the joint here, they've used one of the little plastic sleeves that normally is used for the other lights, uh, and they've sat the, soldered the wire, sat them on their side, and then it's oozing with what looks like hot melt glue, so they've then sealed that with a, a suitable sealer, so it's not going to corrode inside either. Uh, I wonder how good this is going to be. It does have a sort of grommet type thing on it. But anyway, one of the interesting things, this came through and it had a sticker in the envelope that said, you know, non-compliant with European standards or something. I can't remember exactly what it said. I should have kept it. And it was really odd. I don't know if it was put on by the seller or it was put on by the postal system. And the only thing I can think of is that maybe it's because there's a battery in this and the you know, that meant it was non-compliant with the postal regulations. But having said that, it wasn't delayed because this thing came through at exactly the same time and I ordered them both at the same time. So, it's got two buttons in the back. Uh, one is power on-off and uh, I don't think you're going to see this because, you know, they're not super... Me oh, they're not bad. They're not super mega bright. They're designed for sort of outdoor use. Uh, and it's got two modes. You can click the mode button and it starts flash on and off. So let's uh, open it up and take a look inside. I'm guessing maybe it's the using the standard little four pin chip that's normally used just for the standard solar lights. Because that would probably be easy. Oh no, no it can't be because it's got the flashing mode. Uh, the other ones I've seen that do that have a little eight pin chip uh, with the flashing function built in. But uh, we'll soon see. Okay, what size is the cell going to be? It says 500 milliamp. Oh, it says 1,500 milliamp power. Feels quite heavy, so it could well be. I may put that to the test. Uh, the chip. So what we've got on here, we've got the two buttons. We've got a resistor and a capacitor. We've got the little inductor that steps, that boosts the voltage up. And then we've got a chip which says... Oh, it's YX8616. Hold on a second. YX8616. So I'm just going to go and check and see if I can find any data on that on the internet. So I went on the internet and did not find a data sheet for that chip at all, that YX8616. And I also checked the YX861, which there did seem to be a variant of that. And you could find tiny little thumbnails of uh, perhaps a schematic, but nothing that provides much information. So, um, But definitely not a data sheet. That's very odd. I think it's very much a, a similar chip to others. So I took a photo to the back of the circuit board and sort of reversed engineered it a wee bit. Not that there's much to reverse engineer. And here's the basic schematic of the unit. It's really all done by that chip. So... Uh, Starting with the solar power, 
there's a common negative rail which just affects just about everything. It's just, you know, everything is just connected to negative. The nickel metal hydrides, the solar panel, the, all the switches and capacitors, it's, it's very simple. The solar panel goes to the solar input. I'm guessing that inside the chip here, between pins one, two, th uh, four and three is a diode. Plus uh, pin four, the solar input is also used for sensing dusk. It comes out the, the, from the diode to uh, pin 3, which then goes to the nickel metal hydride cell. But there's a switch so you can actually isolate it. That's the power on off switch. Then there's a, uh, the inductor goes from the positive to the coil. Uh, not the, the coil. The, I, I've just called that. Uh, I, I, would have I would have written inductor in there. There just wasn't enough room, so I just wrote coil. That seemed reasonable enough. Uh, and which then, obviously, when it gets dusk, that is then driven, and that's what uh, drives the LEDs the out and the sort of parallel array of LEDs and output. Timing components, I'm guessing for the flashing, that's what the 10 microfarad capacitor's for, and the 100k resistor's for. Uh, there's a, a facility, there's an option on the circuit board for another resistor or other component to be connected here, but I'm, I haven't a clue what that is. The mode switch uh, toggles between flashing and static, and oddly... Uh, it's got a changeover switch, which uh, also connects to this capacitor and maybe just shunts the capacitor, uh, although it would be connected to the input. I'm not sure if it's an error or, or it's deliberate, because they've not soldered that pin, it's just floating free air and it's not making a connection with the track in the vicinity. But the, that's it. Um, it's a very simple circuit. It's, I would say that, that you know it's going to be a clone of another chip or it's going to have been cloned. There'll be other chips that pretty much of the same circuit uh, diagram. So, um, other thoughts on this. Oh, there's a thing, I could actually get that. This solar panel looks quite generous. Let's uh, see what sort of um, current it puts out into a dead short. I'm gonna be optimistic and put it up to 200 milliamps. Um, and stick it over one of these lights. That's putting out, just with one of these lights, that's putting out over uh, hold on, I'll just move the meter so you can see it. That is putting out, and this is a 20 watt bench light. Let's see if I can find that sweet spot again. Yeah, that's uh, putting, yeah, that's really impressive actually. That's about 160 milliamps I, I managed to get there. Okay, that's good. Now, I've got a little niggle about the solar panel. Something that's uh, caused problems with other lights in the past. They've got a recess in the plastic case. I don't see the sort of fiberglass circuit board material that is commonly used. Where's, that? Where's one? Here's one. Quite often you get the little solar panels laid onto the fiberglassy type material and then covered in the resin and then sat in. And the upside of that is it gives them lots of good strong support. These appear to be just laid into the... Uh, stuck onto the plastic and then flooded the resin. And I've had problems with that with some solar lights in the past, whereby the thermal expansion of direct sunlight, you put the light out in direct sun, or the sun comes out from behind a cloud and it, it suddenly warms the front of this up on a really bright day. And the expansion ratio of the plastic to the uh, silicon inside, it causes the uh, silicon solar cells to crack. and when I've, I've been tested in this in the past with a, a halogen light just holding some other uh, solar lights up and I heard a loud tink noise from them when I held them up and I thought, well, what was that? And I looked at it and there was a little white line just right across the solar cell and that was it. When I measured it, you know, that was the solar cell. Just, you know, the only part that was working was between the metal strip and where it had broken. So uh, I'm wondering how this is going to fare. Um, there's only one way to find out and that's to stick it in the garden. But uh, other than that, I do like the fact that they're switching to using the uh, copper wire LED strings, as they call them on eBay. Um, and I'd love to see the machine that makes these, because it's very clear that the two copper wires are fed into the machine and then dipped down uh, in a series of dips. Um, and then have the, the, I'm guessing there's a grinder just takes the insulation off and then uh, presses the LED on and applies the solder and then dips it in resin as it goes through the machine. So I'm guessing that really it's just wire and LEDs into the machine and um, the completed LED strings and a continuous conveyor belt coming out the other. 
um, they're quite neat and it does it does make them completely waterproof. So um, yeah, it, it's quite interesting. Apart from that slight doubt about the solar panels and the plastic, it, it looks quite neat. So I'm going to give it a I'm going to give it a test. So a couple of little extra notes. The battery does come out at slightly higher than 1,500 milliamp hour, which is very good. And the LEDs, uh, it looks amply bright for outdoor use. Uh, the string of LEDs is not the type that has the three wires. Sometimes you get a version of these LEDs that it's, if it's a short section, it's just fed from one end. Others, there's a three wire system where the positive is fed in one end, but the negative is fed from the other. And that means that the, the equivalent sort of series resist, resistance of the wire and the LED is um, the same, the full length of the string and all the intensities are the same. Having said that, it's running them at low intensity and I will say that the ones at the very end, this is the very last LED here, and you may not, not be able to see it, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, it looks dimmer than the one in the first the first one in the string, but that's to be expected really. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty good. I quite like that. It, it's really, really quite acceptable for for the garden, so uh, I'm going to maybe uh, stick that out then and just see how it lasts. <laughs>